All right, Becky and Luke here. And as you can see in front of you, this is that NEC PC8801 MK2 SR. And uh, this is the one that's gone through a little bit of uh, some overhaul work onto it. You can see that uh, the front panel here is lightened up just a little bit. It's not as yellow as it was when you guys first saw it. Uh, if you had watched the kind of restoration video I was in the process of, I took this thing outside and uh, I put some of the Oxidol on it, let it sit out there for a couple of days, and it got a bit better. So I'm pretty pleased with the results. Unfortunately, I don't think that the computer itself is going to go back to its original gray color, but yeah, having this kind of cream color is uh, not too bad at all. Well, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit more about this PC in detail, talk a little bit more about the specs on it, and then uh, how it's important to gaming history. Uh, if you take a look at it, uh, right now you can see there's a monitor on top of it as well. This is a monitor that I had to uh, repair. This is one that was suffering from vertical, uh, vertical collapse, and uh, I was able to repair this monitor. These monitors also are very, very difficult to find, so it's really nice to, to be able to have a monitor for this system. Uh, although this system here, it can use a uh, Sharp X68000 monitor, it's really nice to at least have the NEC logoed one. Originally this thing came with a 14-inch uh, uh, very nice digital display and it was uh, quite big. It actually filled up the whole bottom space here. Really, uh, really big in size, but uh, very beautiful, crisp, clean picture. So uh, this, this does the trick though, <laughs> nonetheless. Uh, taking a look at the machine itself, mm, there are some parts that we won't be able to see on the inside, but just to give you a little bit of a rundown, if you remember the video that uh, we talked about, the Fujitsu FM7 and FM8, uh, the specs on that, the internal processor uh, for this is a 4 megahertz processor, and it has the exact same uh, RAM and uh, video RAM as the uh, FM8 and FM7. It has 64K of RAM and 48K of VRAM, and that's just for this specific version here for the SR. Now there are very, so many variations of uh, the uh, PC-88. It's uh, unbelievable. <laughs> it takes a long time to go through all of them. But uh, one thing that kind of separates this machine here from some of the other machines was it had some excellent, some amazing sound. And the sound was uh, just, it was really much better than, uh, well, more advanced than the other machines at the time. So it actually had an FM sound chip in it. It was mono, but it had three channels. So it put out some really, really nice sound effects. And eventually I will, uh, I'll get into that and I'll show you guys a little bit of it. Maybe in uh, the next video, I'll show you some or let you listen to some of the sounds that the PC puts out. Um, it has, on the back here, well, it also has a um, keyboard here. This is for PC-88. And without the P the keyboard, you're pretty much uh, in trouble. You need the keyboard in order to load everything uh, for the system. Although some games itself will um, kind of instantly load just by putting them in, you really do need the keyboard sometimes to set everything up. So that's a key point there. We'll disconnect it here so we can turn this around a little bit. And... This model here in particular, now there, there are several models I had mentioned before. This is the first model that introduced the ability to play games. So it, it will play almost all of the PC-88 games. So if you're out in the market and you're looking for a PC-88, you definitely want to go for something like an SR. Uh, for other models, there were some models that kind of uh, took some cheap uh, like cheap, cheap shots where they were taking parts out so they didn't have the same capabilities and uh, same game playing abilities as uh, this one here and the earlier ones don't be fooled by just getting a regular PC-88 if you see PC-88 and it just says like uh, Mark 1 or it just says regular PC-8801 uh, PC it's something to probably stay away from as it won't be able to play games so that's uh, a really important point. If we look on the back here, we can see our printer port. We have uh, an I.O. in the back here. We also have another connector here for the tape drive. Uh, we have a line out. We have our digital RGB line, which you could actually take out. And I think that the other monitor might have run on that. Uh, we have black and white. And you can see here's our analog RGB cable that's connected to our monitor. And this is where our volume is, volume pot. Because this thing does have an internal speaker. It's located right here. It's got the nice little grill. And this thing gets quite loud. It actually has a really, really loud speaker, which is really awesome. It uh, really puts out some good music, good sound. Uh, on the back here, you'll notice there are three slots. These were for some external boards uh, that could be added. One of them was a RAM upgrade. I think it was a 4K uh, upgrade 
upgrade that you could actually slide in there. Pretty big boards. The other one was a sound board, another sound board that could be added, and then there was a video board that could be added as well. So those were some of the extras or the add-ons. Um, Let's see here. Going around back here to the different models, uh, like I had mentioned here, the SR is a really good model to have, just because it was the first one to introduce the ability to play games. Uh, if you start going up or uh, down, then you start running into uh, different um, differences in the CPU, differences in the uh, the output or the way that the machine functions. As an example, uh, the next one in line after this, if you take a look at uh, an FH, uh, so it's an MK2 FH, it's actually a cheaper kind of uh, stripped down version of this. So they removed some of the uh, essentials and they just made it a bit cheaper. So not exactly the best thing to go for. But if you start going up to like the FH model or uh, the MH model, they actually swapped out the C CPU and they went from a 4 megahertz uh, CPU to an 8 megahertz CPU and the MH uh, actually went from 64k of RAM uh, up to 192k so uh, a bit of a RAM upgrade there and the further up you go like uh, once you get into like PC88 uh, VA the VA's uh, changed from an 8-bit uh, CPU to uh, 16 bits so it's a, a bit of a, a large upgrade and the the best one I think or the the most sophisticated advanced one that you could get would be like a PC 8801 FE and uh, the FE had uh, NTSC composite video out in the back so you could actually run a, a regular monitor in the back of it it also had the uh, 8 megahertz uh, processor or the CPU in it it had uh, what was it 512 K of memory or RAM and it had a what was it 256 of VRAM so and actually it was a, a pretty beefed up version of this uh, the SR and that one usually goes still for around a thousand dollars or so if you find it it's a uh, it's quite rare and I think a lot of people kind of hold on to it but this is a definite you know a, a great one by itself just the uh, the MK2 SR uh, if we take a look at some of the features on the front here, you can see it has two five and a quarter floppy drives and uh, you'll notice it's got the power switch up here. This is the keyboard uh, plug that we had just kind of taken out. Just plugs in like so. And it has a reset button on the bottom here. If we open up this cover, You'll see on the inside, now it has some of the clock speeds. You can change the clock speed settings, and you can change some of the, uh, I believe, the modem settings for this one as well. One interesting thing here, you'll see the speed uh, for slow. I think that's for slow and, and fast. And then you'll see the mode. This here is video mode setting. If we uh, take a look over here on the front, we'll see all of these different video mode settings. Now with the video mode settings, each one is for a specific kind of um, like system. This one could also play the tapes. So in the back, if you remember uh, with the, what was it, the Sharp X1 or uh, talking about the FM7, they could play di uh, regular cassettes. And for each one of these, there's a certain mode that that has to be in. So for the, uh, the end mode, this has to be used for the PC8000 series and uh, it won't work with anything else. V1 is uh, 640 by 200 and that is eight colors that it'll put out. And uh, V2 is 640 by 200, which is 8 out of 512 colors, so it's a big jump with the uh, the V2 mode. And then after that, it, there's are some modes uh, with some of the later models where you could get like V3, uh, which would put out just a ton more colors. And uh, some of these would actually have, you know, memory of like 116K of RAM. But... Um, this does have a Z80A processor in it, and um, going back to the uh, the video settings, if you try and load a specific game and uh, the game is not in the correct video mode, what it'll do is it'll beep at you, and it's a loud beep. I mean, it just kind of screams. It's like beep, beep, and like a truck backing up, and it'll flash on the screen. It'll say something like V2 mode only or V1 mode only, and when it does something like that, what you have to do is you have to go down here and you have to switch uh, either V2, V1, or uh, N mode. So if you don't do it, it'll, it won't load any of the games. It won't load any of the software. And uh, it's a very picky, <laughs> picky machine here. But 
it is a, a fantastic machine. If we go over some of the uh, games and the game software that were made for this machine, this had a, a lot of different developers go in on it and the, lots of games made by some really famous developers like uh, Enix, Square, uh, Sega had uh, their foot in on this as well. We also had some Falcom, uh, Bandai, if you guys are really familiar with the Bandai and the, uh, the Gundam series. Uh, had HAL, HAL Laboratories, and uh, Wolf Team. And there were even a few games that were made by Konami that were ported over from the MSX, and uh, those were also playable on this. There were a couple of uh, games, actually, that had the exact same release on both systems um, for the MSX and for the PC-88. So you would see a little bit of overlap between the two. One really interesting thing about this system here is it received some releases from Nintendo. Now, with Nintendo, it, it had some great releases um, like Super Mario Brothers, it had, uh, what was it, Excite Bike, uh, some, some of the average ones are like tennis, but it had Ice Climber, things like that. But one of the most original and unique games it had was uh, Super Mario Brothers Special. Now, it wasn't the best of games, you know, it wasn't the most, uh, you know, mind-blowing games ever, but it was unique to this machine only. And uh, if you ever try and take a look at it on YouTube, you'll probably find some really, really rough gameplay videos on it. Uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't very fast. If you can imagine, like, uh, taking a look at maybe some of the R-Type videos that I put up, or the last R-Type video on the MSX, kind of similar to that. The music was a little bit slow, and uh, nonetheless, though, it was a Mario game. It was very similar to Super Mario Brothers, but it had a lot of differences with uh, the introduction. I think it was released by Hudson as as well so Hudson actually had their foot in on it and there's some kind of cool uh, overlap with Hudson and Nintendo on the inside of the game with some of the stages or stage designs and things like that so some really cool games that were released on it some of the more famous ones that were released for this one were the ease uh, ease one two and three and uh, some really awesome ones like uh, Silphied was released for this. Really beautiful uh, music, fantastic sound, and uh, a really great looking game. There were other games like uh, Hydlide 3 and um, just a, a whole uh, kind of slew of different games. There was Snatcher. Snatcher was released on this one from Konami. So really great machine to have, but uh, very hard to find all of the components that you need for it in order to get this thing working. Now, uh, I think I have this thing plugged in. I'll double check here. But uh, I can try and start this thing up for you. It's got a nice uh, beefy fan on it here and uh, <laughs> makes a, a bit of noise, but it's, you know, that's ex expected for this age of uh, a unit. So uh, up here on the top of this monitor, uh, we got our power. And this thing takes a little bit of time. If you guys remember the old days of uh, trying to wait for the monitor to heat up, that's uh, it's kind of what it is now. But uh, you should be able to see it here in a few minutes, hopefully. It'll click on there, there it goes. Like I said, it takes a little bit of time. But then if we hit the old power switch on this monster, You can see how it's just checking there. And what this machine uses as far as its uh, operating system, it uses a very specific operating system to the machine here, which is uh, N88 Basic. So it's uh, its its own operating, uh, own operating system here. Um, normally this thing will take a few minutes to kind of warm up or load up. And then, let's see. Yeah, there it goes. So, so how many files? And this is where you can do some of the hot keys if you want to. Uh, I believe it's, well, I don't have the keyboard hooked up. But uh, some of the hot keys on here I think are like F1 will allow you to uh, list or F4 will, will hit load as you can see down here. Well, maybe you can't see. It's a bit bright. Uh, this one says load, auto, uh, go to, list, and run. Uh, if we press, I think, like F1, let's say. Oh, well, let's press enter first. And you can see here, it shows the system itself. So NEC N88 Basic version 2.0, copyrighted by Microsoft. So, and you can see it has uh, 56,543 bits uh, free. And let's see if we press F1. Yeah, so F1 is load. Um, if we press this, I think it'll beep. Yeah, bad file name. So uh, if we press, what is it? F2 is auto. 
So once again, I think it'll say bad file. Oh no, it'll say 10, okay. And then I think it'll go on up here from like 10 to 20 or whatever. Let's see, go to is F3. And list, I think maybe F4. Oh no, run is F4. But nonetheless, you can see it's got its own operating system going on here. Uh, and with a lot of the games, when you put the games in, they will read, for the most part, by themselves. Uh, for some of the games, you have to use a user disk, you have to use a scenario disk. And the way that that works is, you pop the user disk into uh, slot 2. Maybe I can turn the lights on here. Oh. You, uh, you would put the user disk into slot 2, and then you would put the scenario disk into slot 1. And uh, you would, you know, turn them both, uh, and what it would do is, it would say, what is it? Uh, like, the music would actually start up in the machine. And it would say, like, copy files to, press, a, press any, any button to copy files to the user disk, and then it would automatically start copying files. And then the user disk would be the one that you use for uh, the gaming. And after that, what you would do is pop in a, a disk that said like opening or opening credits or something like that, and then it would start up the game. And you would leave uh, the user disk in slot two. So, but nonetheless, just wanted to share this with you guys here and uh, let you take a look at one of the most awesome uh, PC gaming uh, pieces of equipment that was ever made. Uh, this is a really fantastic uh, system. And I will definitely make sure to put up some videos here so you guys can take a look at this thing in action and see for yourself but that's about all for me for right now like always I'll put up another video here soon so thanks for watching press the old reset and we'll turn off the power and we'll turn off the old monitor Pew.